Well, I'm going to make this video a little bit about um, the Chevrolet. It turned out it was a 51, not a 50 Chevrolet. Um, I went and checked it out today and uh, made the guy an offer on it, but he just wanted too much money, so I didn't buy the car. And I'll talk a little bit about that and other vehicles. You know, I was thinking of like Ben's, uh, Corvette Ben's 59 Mercury, and I'll talk about that kind of stuff too here. So we're going to take the Bel Air out for a ride, and uh, then we will, I'll talk about it while we're out for a ride on Woodward. Well, you can see why I don't uh, video backing out. I got a pickup there and an escape there, and I got to kind of turn the car in the garage and back out on an angle to clear everything. So, all right, let's go for a ride. Well, the first thing about the 51 Chevy was I didn't get any video of it because, you know, I don't like to video on somebody else's property without their permission. And I don't think he was really comfortable with me uh, videoing it. But it was a California car, pretty solid. The undercarriage needed cleaning and painting, you know, the undercoating was peeling and surface rust and a couple floor pan braces were rusted out. Spare tire hole had a new one pop riveted in. Um, did get it running and it was drivable, um, but it needed a carb overhaul and a lot of engine work. Well, engine was fine, just needed a good tune-up. Good carb overhaul and a good tune-up. Um, you know, it, it, it needed a, a lot of money put into it and he wanted seven grand and the lowest he would go was 52. And uh, I wasn't prepared to pay that kind of money for a car that I can't, you know, I wouldn't be able, it, make any money. I mean, it's that era of car, there goes a older Monte Carlo, like from 71 or 2, that era of car is not a desirable error. And it's a four-door and it's a six-cylinder. So those are the three strikes against it. Um, but it was a Calif solid, actually pretty solid California car. And uh, it needed a complete interior, 100% complete, and that's what I'm looking for, a project that I can do an interior on. And Corvette Ben's car, I started Googling what those cars sell for, and it looks like I could get a turnkey one, drivable, not needing paint, upholstery, or anything, for $6,500. And I would have, you know, by the time I get it here, if you you know, took a less money for it, I'd still have four or five grand and uh, just getting it back to Michigan if I bought it. So that car's out, you know, it just needs too much work, you know, pay five grand to get a car like that here and put another, you know, eight or 10 into it plus all the hours, there'd be no money left in it. it would, I would take a loss on that car. Much like this 50 Chevy, the lowest he would go or 51 Chevy, I'm sorry, the lowest he would go was $5,200. I wasn't prepared to pay more than $3,000 for it, maybe $3,500, but, you know, I mean, he did get it running, but it ran poor. The engine sounded good, though, it didn't have any knocks or rattles or noises in it or anything, but it... You had to keep the choke pulled to keep it running at lower RPM and then at higher RPMs you'd have to push the choke in and you know so you're constantly playing with the choke trying to drive it the brakes worked um, so the generator the pulley was disintegrated and caught in the crank pulley so I had to get that out to get it running and I do have some still photos of it that I'll include in this video so that's a little bit on the the 51 Chevrolet, it was a 51 Chevrolet Deluxe. And also my friend Dave Robertson bought a 63 Buick Wildcat. I presume it has the 401 nail head in it. So I'm gonna try and get out his way, and make a video on that car. Pretty cool car, so. Uh, we'll take a little bit of a lap on Woodward and see what's out tonight. That 
that's the 51 Chevrolet sitting in the industrial building. See there's a garage door right here. This is on my computer screen, so I'm just filming it, videoing it off my computer screen. This is kind of the rear, and you can see the, I don't know if it shows up in here or not, but you can actually see the crack there and there, and there's like an inner metal flap in here that kind of supports that part of the fender. And that was in the trunk, it wasn't on the car, so that's why it had those two cracks in the sheet metal, and they'd been bondoed up, so all that bondo has to be cleaned out and welded up, and redoing old body work is not fun, but the car really had no rust through on it anywhere it was a solid car but once it was washed up yeah the paint was in need of it was in need of a complete paint job and that was the 216 cubic inch inline six that was in it, it was the original engine the generator pulley had come apart and was caught between the belt and the crankshaft pulley so the engine wouldn't crank but we got it running and drove it. It actually does run and drive, but the carburetor needs to be rebuilt. Needs uh needs you know a good going through. You can see the ancient hose and clamps and stuff from the past. So that was the fifty one Chevrolet. Yeah, I drove the Chevy up to Cranbrook for a little run in it. But anyway, back to the fifty one the the right rear fender had a fatigue crack in it, which would kind of be, you know, they have a bubbled out fender, but basically would have been behind the tire right in here where the fender had been moving because the inner brace was out, which was in the trunk and was not rusted out. The gauges, none of them worked. Um, the windshield wipers, the they didn't work. A lot of the stuff on the car didn't work. Turn signals didn't work. It just needed so much. It, you know, it was almost to the point where it just needed to be stripped down. The paint, yeah, it looks nice like this in the photos, but the paint was peeled and it was a poor paint job to begin with. And so the car needed bumper to bumper repaint the pot metal like, when I say pot metal, this type of metal here, like the door handles, things that were a magnesium alloy were all pitted because the California car, you know, you get this ocean salt. The bumpers were in good shape on it, but the the pot metal was pitted and the stainless all needed to be some of it needed to be bumped out and straightened. So it needed a bumper to bumper paint job. Needed a lot of mechanical work and so I was looking at with an interior and everything, you know, I'm looking at you know, seven, eight thousand dollars of work, you know, money it needed to be put into the car for a car that's worth, you know, seven, eight thousand restored. So for even, even at two, three thousand dollars, it's not a money maker. So that's why, you know, I didn't, you know, four door sedan. This is a four door sedan. This was a sport coupe like the Catalina, be worth so much more than a what it is as a four door sedan or even station wagon. Station wagons sell. For more than what like sedans sell for so that's kind of where I was coming at with the uh, um, 51 Chevrolet it just was it's just a project that needs too much work for what he wanted for the car but you know I mean I'll, I'll I do have some still photos and like I say I'll add them to the video and I think I'm gonna pass on Corvette Benz Mercury and I'll put I found one on Craigslist, $6,500 in Ohio. Looked like a pretty darn nice turnkey car. I asked the guy to send me some interior and engine and, you know, undercarriage shots and stuff, but I haven't got any reply from him. But, you know, I just wanted to kind of check the car out. I'm probably not going to, I don't want to spend that kind of money. I'm looking for a project, 3000 or less, that definitely needs an interior because I'm going to buy a walking foot sewing machine and I'm going to learn how to do upholstery and I'm going to reupholster the this car back to original. This is not the original upholstery in the car. So I thought I'd put the door panels, put original door panels back on the original fabric and vinyl and redo the interior in this car back to 
factory original is what my goal was. So, and again, we'll try and get a little video of Dave's 63 Wildcat in the future. It's the same color as what the Catalina was. It's a really beautiful car. And being a Wildcat, now I don't know, I haven't really talked to him about the drivetrain, but I'm assuming it would have the 401 nail head in it. So, it'd be a fun car. Maybe I can talk him into taking us for a ride in it. I'd like to ride in that 47 Pontiac he has, too. So, maybe I can talk him into cranking some of them up and going for a little ride. So, anyway, I just wanted to make a little video and talk about the projects, and I thought we'd do it here at Cranbrook. This is the Cranbrook Art Museum in Cranbrook Academy Art. They have a master's program here for artists. So, I'll just take a walk up here. There's a private boys and girls high school here. Kind of a neat place. It's worth a visit if you're in the Michigan area. This is in West Bloomfield, Michigan. And it's definitely, or Bloomfield Hills maybe. It's uh, definitely worth a visit to Cranbrook. They have a science museum and with the planetarium, if you're into the stars and night skies, you can go for walks here. In beautiful Japanese garden here. A lot of nature trails. Fun place to, to visit. A lot, of, a lot of neat stuff here. This was all... Uh, Saarinen is the architect of this place. So everything here is very unique. Really nice place. Maybe I'll do a little video on the drive out. pond down in there. It looks like it's pretty dried up. Now if we went forward we'd end up at the you know, science wall drive up there. What the heck. Science Museum and the planetariums up here. They have like a telescope thing there too, I forget what you call those, but anyway, the planetarium's right here. We got a dinosaur here, how about that? That's the planetarium. It's worth a visit. And then again, the, oops, sorry, the planetarium. We got some koi ponds here too. Koi pond right there. The telescopes in there. So they always got some neat things going on here. That was a residence at one time for the, one of the artists in residence. That's a fairly new parking garage there.
those go to those poles there go to the other they tell where they go to on the other side of the planet if you board those straight down through the other side I forget where sometime I'll have to make a video of that I'm not going to do it now steep downhill here so I just leave it in second let the engine slow the car that's where some of the residents live and I think the the athletics field and some of the boys schools down in there they're private schools very expensive school to attend I think you'd have to be a multimillionaire to be able to send your kids here going very fast not even doing 25 miles an hour going uphill pretty good right now no, it doesn't show in the video, but it is pretty steep incline. That's why it's Bloomfield Hills. All right, I'm about to turn out on uh, Woodward here, so I'm going to turn the video off. That's really just where we're at. All kinds of cruisers out tonight. Here's a couple on the road. Oh, Lincoln. The Lincoln convertible with the suicide doors. Car ahead of us too. I can't tell what it is, but something from the 30s. That Wrangler next to me had some pretty noisy tires, so just give it a little bit of juice to get by it. Catch up to this car. I can't tell from here, but it's got 39 Michigan plates on it. So we can get a front view. It's a Lincoln. 39 Lincoln. What a cool car. Nice. Yeah, 
teken. Lots of nice cars out tonight. They might get down to a third of a tank or so. I think we'll take this up and top it off and go for another lap or two. Yeah, so I was just talking to the owner of the Lincoln and it is a V12 with the aluminum heads. So, pretty cool. Don't see these very often, especially in a wagon. It smells like exhaust out here. It's just been one car right after another. It's almost like dream cruise time. That's a beautiful car. Sixty one Pontiac. So you can kind of see what a uh, year newer than what my Catalina looked like. Beautiful Fleetwood. Tonight's a fun night of cruising because you can get out and move, even with the construction. Well, I didn't have it on the right setting, but there is a lot of cars out. I just missed a whole bunch back there. Doing a few laps in the old car, just giving a nice run. Even with all the road construction, like I say, there's lots of nice rides out. Hundreds and hundreds of cars. Pickups coming up behind us. I don't know if it shows up in the video or not. I don't think it did, but it was turning around. But anyway, I'm headed home for the night, and I just want to say I think the 39 Lincoln was my favorite vehicle to have the 
performance parts on your flathead V12 I think would be pretty darn rare. Um, so that was kind of a neat vehicle. I would take that. That would be my number one pick out of the cars uh, that I saw tonight. So I'll keep you updated on any new uh, cars I might be interested in. I might look at a 67 Ford Galaxy convertible. I think I said that earlier. And also a 59 Edsel. I'd really like a 58 Edsel, but if I'm going to do a major restoration like Ben's uh, 59 Mercury needs, it's going to be a 58 Edsel. I like the Edsels. I like them as much as the 59 Chevy. So I like all of them. With the 58 being my favorite, I may look at this 59. The 60 is the rarest. And, you know, I would do a 60 Edsel also because they're so rare. But again, 58 is really what I want. But we'll, I'll keep an eye out. We'll look at some, you know, I'll be looking at some other cars. And if I, uh, if the owners don't mind me videoing them, I'll video them. If they don't want me to, obviously I won't. Again, if you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, and thank you for watching. There we go. Going out to make money from all the people out cruising Woodward. <laughs> yeah, there it was getting more and more crowded as I'm heading home. It's uh, about 9 o'clock right now. So, anyway, again, thank you for watching my videos. So tomorrow I'm going to go out to Dave's and try and get some video of this. Maybe we can take it for a drive. It is a 63 Buick Wildcat. Looks almost the same color as the Catalina. That's the inside of the Wildcat. Dave emailed these pictures to me, so I'm, again, I'm just uh, recording these off my computer screen. Looks like it has an air conditioning unit there, maybe, I don't know if it looks aftermarket, it's hard to tell. Usually there's vents in the dash if it's factory or, but we'll check it out when we go out there and uh, check the car out. And there's the, you know, the front view. And if you look, you can see the 59 Pontiac he has over there. So, those are the. We'll do a future video on this car, and I just will add those pictures with the 51 Chevrolet so you can see it. And this is a project car I may go look at. Uh, you know, I'd rather have the 58 Edsel, but I do like the 59s. And it looks fairly solid. So, we'll see. That was all uh, photos of the Edsel. But I may uh, check that car out too. And this is one last car I may, may go check out. It has a 289 two barrel. The three on the tree. But I like the 67 Fords. I think they're a neat looking car. Shows 31,082 miles on the odometer. So we'll see.